Hello and welcome to White Glove Reviews and welcome to the $20 EDH Challenge. Now, the $20 EDH Challenge is its an idea that I, I ran across, I, I came up with this idea, it was inspired by a couple of different things. The first thing was I am supposed to be over the summer helping uh, a group of like 13 to 17 year olds with some of their summer activities. And one of the activities they expressed an interest in was magic. And so I was thinking, although it's not exactly perfect to teach someone magic with EDH because you're kind of pushing them in the deep end, I was thinking if you had a, if you had kind of a, a controlled group of decks, it might not be too awful. And it would also expose them to EDH, which is an amazingly fun and social way to play Magic. And the second, the, the, the next thing that led to the inspiration for the $20 EDH challenge was I ran across a video by Jumbo Commander, and he did a $15... Uh, crap, I don't remember the general. It was the red-green one. Anyway, he did a he did a, a video on that on a fifteen dollar deck, and I thought that was a really a neat idea. And what I was thinking is, it would solve both my problems. It would first of all it'd be an interesting deck building challenge, and second it would provide me with some decks that the kids could use. And depending upon how like activity fees worked out, I mean they might just be able to keep the decks because they're going to be twenty dollar decks. So, I mean, the decks aren't going to be expensive. And another thing that I, this is kind of a, a, a third reason. I noticed lately at the, it, I'd taken a little bit of time away from playing at my local card shop. And when I went back there recently, I noticed that there were two different, there were like different cliques of, of players. And one of the things that concerned me was that the younger and newer players didn't want to play with the older, more experienced players. And I think part of the reason for this is for the reason for this was that there was kind of the I don't know how to put it diplomatically. There's the blowout factor, where older, more experienced players also tend to have a deeper card pool. And so they're just starting at a disadvantage. And if you combine that with the fact that they're more ex more inexperienced and they haven't been playing Magic for, I don't know, 20-some years, it just it creates a bad situation for them. And I can see why they might not want to walk into a game where they just they have a noticeably less of a chance because of their inexperience combined with their lack of card pool that they have available. So the third thing I was thinking these decks would be good for is they they create a situation where you could play a deck and you shouldn't necessarily like you could, you should be able to play it with new players and not have the you should be able to play it with new players try to be as competitive as possible and avoid the feel bad blowout situation that they have that the newer players have while also letting them play like encouraging them to play with more experienced players so they can get a better grasp of some of the rules intricacies and that kind of thing cuz i noticed i noticed when i was uh, watching some of the games that some of the newer players were playing they had rules issues that I mean, they had rules issues that were common to new players, and they just needed some explanation, and the, they would get the change. They, they would get the correct rules, you know, sorted out. But they needed to play, they needed someone experienced to sort of help them through some of the rough spots. And so those are my three arguments for why, well, why I decided that this would be a neat challenge, and except for the, you know, kids' activity over the summer. It really is a fun deck building challenge to have $20 and be able to build your deck. Now, another fun aspect of this is you can take your deck list, dump it into TCG Player's Mass Entry, and hit order, and you can have a deck arrive, 
in like 10 or 12 envelopes a couple days later for 20 bucks throw in some basic lands and you're done so um okay before i forget uh there's also a challenge um, a challenge there's a contest that goes along with this and if you're interested in entering the contest all you have to do is subscribe to this channel and then leave a comment for this video and you'll be entered in t for a, a drawing to win a, a copy of this deck that I'm about to talk about, the, the green and red Omnath deck. And I will ship that to you anywhere in the world. You'll get your own $20 EDH deck with, you know, it'll be a $20 EDH deck. But you'll, you won't have to assemble it yourself. I'll just mail it to you. And anyway, the contest will be from, it'll run from when this video is posted to May 29th, Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. And just, if you're, if you're interested in entering the contest, please make sure you have subscribed and left a comment. And uh, I'll random, I'll, I'll use one of those random comment picker pages and I'll pick a comment from the, from the comments and I will send the winner a copy of the deck. Okay. Now, now that I've taken, got that taken care of, I want to talk about the rules for the $20 deck challenge, first of all. The... The first rule is that, and I'll put the rules like right there. The first rule is that your deck must cost $20 or less. And this is completely not an enforceable thing. I mean, this is a, it's, it's all kind of a personal, you know, honor challenge kind of thing. So this is, this is really just a deck building exercise to entertain yourself. But for me, my rule was the deck has to cost $20 or less. And this account, this counts, this counts everything except for basic land, and that's rule number two. Basic lands are free, because basic lands are effectively free. I think if you hunted around, you could get them for like ten dollars per thousand or something like that. So they and they might be a penny each. I just decided that for my own sanity, I didn't want to have to worry about counting my basic lands, so they're free. I've got a box of them or two boxes of them around somewhere, and I'll just root through the box. Okay. Rule number three, for getting the prices for your cards, what, what I'm using is I'm using Scryfall, and what I'm doing is I just look at the list of prices on Scryfall, and then whatever the cheapest price is, I will note that, as you can see from my crazy person notes. I'll just note that on my page whenever I look up the card, and then that way, that's going to be the price I counted as. Now... Number four is related to the prices as well. The prices are set at the point where I look them up. If I go back and I look up the price later and it changes, I will update it. But in general, just for sanity's sake, rule number four is the prices are set at the point when you look them up. And the reason for this is I don't want to have to have a crazy moving target when I'm trying to build my deck. I don't want, say, Ogre Battle Driver to go from $0.26 cents to $0.13 cents or from $0.26 cents to $0.39 cents between when I look it up and when I try to build my deck. I just, it just, magic prices fluctuate too much and it just, it's, it's too much of a headache to, to, not, have, to not have at least semi-set prices for when you're trying to build the deck. And that's pretty much it. 20 bucks, look them up on Scryfall, basic lands are free. And that's really the whole thing. Now, the challenge that I wanted to do for myself is, initially I wanted to build one deck. And my first deck was going to be Omnath, Locus of Rage. But when I started working on it, I decided I kind of liked the idea. And I decided I was going to build one for each of the allied colors to start out with. And this video is going to talk about Omnath, Locus of Rage, and I will make future. I'll make four more videos dealing with my next four decks. And if you look in the the description, I'll include uh, links for the tapped out versions. I'll include the 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 beta version and my updated version of my Omnath deck, and I'll include the beta versions for the other four. And the other four are going to be. Let me see. I got them here somewhere. 
Um, no, it's not worth the Raid Mother. Um, number The red-black one is Grinzo, the dungeon... I don't know what he is, Dungeon Warder or something like that, Dungeon Warden. Uh, Grenzo, Grenzo, Grenzo. And I, I was started working on Bruna, but I decided I didn't like her. And so another one is Mary Weatherlight Duelist. And then a Daxos of Melitus. And Laziv Demir Mastermind. Anyway, those are my five decks that I'm starting off with this challenge. And links to the tapped out versions of all of them are in the description. And I just have the two, I have the beta and the current version of Omnath and the beta versions of the other four. And what I'm going to do is hopefully I will get help and feedback from Reddit where I can improve these decks and make them as competitive as possible for under $20. I also want to try and avoid any infinite combos, and this is just kind of a I don't want to I don't want to do that. And the sad thing is, in Grenzo, I think I already have to have a cut because I think um, Workhorse gives me an infinite combo. Anyway, so I guess what I want to do is I want to talk about the Grenzo deck first of all. Not not, not Grenzo. I'm sorry, my the Omnath Locus of Rage deck. And let me. Grab the deck real quick. Here you go. And I gotta tell you, it's it is it is so fun and easy to build a deck by opening some envelopes and sleeving it. And that's really all you gotta do with this particular deck. With this particular kind of deck. Alright. So Omnath obviously is he's a land he, he has landfall and landfall what that means is that whenever land comes into play, you do something. In this case, he puts a 5-5 red and green elemental into play. And whenever he or another elemental dies, or another elemental you control dies, you get to lightning bolt something. And so it's kind of a, you want to be able to sacrifice stuff, you want to be able to put lands into play, which is all kind of stuff you want to do anyway. And then elemental token. I didn't charge myself at all for the elemental tokens kind of cause I, you know, uh, they're optional. I just, I blew like 84 cents on this elemental token and I think this one was under a dollar. I just kind of felt like I wanted ele I wanted tokens that were appropriate. But the tokens don't count towards your total. So, as part of your $20 EDH challenge, if you want to go crazy and get tokens, more power to you. Alright. So, the Acidic Slime, and I'm going to put the cards up and the prices when I pop up the cards as I talk about them and I'll just go through these one at a time and discuss like why they're here and what brought me to add them. Acidic Slime is just it's a really good utility card in EDH and it's also cheap. I think it's 25 cents something like that. All right. Burnished Heart, it puts lands into play. And really, if you'll, you'll see as we go along that the deck puts a lot of lands into play. That's the main goal. What I really wanted to be able to do is I wanted to be able to cast Omnath on turn 5 as consistently as possible. And I know that's not super fast, but again, I'm not expecting like super competitive EDH. I'm expecting more of a, uh, you know, a more casual kind of EDH. So where, you know, turn five for your Omnath isn't too terrible. And Burnish Heart puts a couple lands to play. Carvin Carrioted. Carvin, yeah, Carvin Carrioted. Um, this is a Wall of Blossoms. It's a little bit more expensive that does damage. It has the potential to give you a little bit of defense early on, and you draw a card for it, so it doesn't hurt you too much if you get it later on. Decimator of the Provinces is kind of a discount um, overrun slash overwhelming stampede kind of thing, because at some point you're probably going to have a lot of elementals, and you want to 
you know, kill someone with it. So you got to trample helps. Den Protector. Uh, Eternal Witness is very much out of our budget, but the Den Protector is not. And oftentimes it's really helpful to get something back from your graveyard. Uh, Dual Caster Mage. Also pretty inexpensive. And a lot of times... Uh, dual Caster Mage is one of those things that, depending upon what your, what your opponents are doing, he gets a lot better. Because the better spells you can copy, the better he is. And again, he's not too terribly expensive. Farhaven Elf puts a land into play. Fertilid puts a couple lands into play. Uh, Garrick's Pack Leader. Unless you draw a creature, uh, whenever a creature power three or greater comes into play, you get to draw a card. So if you have a situation where you're putting a lot of elementals into play, you also get to draw cards off of all of those, which is kind of nice. Genesis Hydra. We're going to reach the point where we should have a decent amount of mana on the table. And Genesis Hydra uh, just has a decent amount of value associated with it. Also, it's quite inexpensive. Green Warden of Mursa? Marassa? Murrasa? Anyway. Uh, another Eternal Witness surrogate? Surrogate. Um, yeah, is that sur surrogate? Anyway. Another inexpensive version of Eternal Witness. Endric Stomp Haller. This one is just, again, a utility card to take out uh, artifacts or enchantments, and it has a body attached to it. Ingot Chewer. Uh, I kind of want to evoke an Ingot Chewer when you have Omnath out, so you get to destroy an artifact and lightning bolt something. But, I don't know. He's sort of with a question mark on him. Minna and Den, playing extra lands is a good thing. They are quite affordable. And also, having the ability to bounce and replay lands, it seems like it would be very helpful as things sort of start to stagnate. You might reach a point where you've put a lot of land into play, and this will let you sort of recycle your lands so you can replay them and get more elementals. The Ogre Battle Driver... One of the issues with the elementals that you get off of Omnath is they don't have haste, and this lets you put in a bunch of put in a bunch of elementals into play, and it turns them into seven fives till the end of the turn, and lets you swing with them. So it provides like if you have this out, and you do something that puts a bunch of lands into play, then you could possibly get an overwhelming hasty force from nowhere. Orin Viper is uh, um, this one has been a maybe cut for like I'm surprised this card survived my first cut and update for this deck uh, but uh, sometimes you just need a little guy to possibly play at the beginning to draw you some cards but the problem is he feels like a dead card late game next you have realm seekers and a deck that is built around putting lands into play, Realm Seekers gets you more lands, and it also has the potential to give you a ridiculously large creature, just for six mana. Sandstone Oracle is some cheap card draw. Well, not not exactly cheap. It's financially inexpensive card draw. It's Expensive mana-wise, but it also has the potential to get you a good deal of cards if you start to run low and your hand starts to run out. Um, a Shefit Monitor. And I think this is the only foil that made it into the deck. And the reason for that is I didn't get sent my Shefit Monitor non-foil, so I ran it, had to dig up a foil from my cards and anyway... Being able to cycle and it puts a land into play, it, it it's it's a decent choice for something that you can do, and sometimes it's very nice to be able to put a land into play at instant speed, in case you just suddenly need a blocker. Silk Lash Spider 
is a good defense against flying creatures. And again, you should have a decent amount of mana on the board since you're doing since your general directly benefits from you ramping. And Silk Lash Spider can hurricane away, well, not exactly hurricane, but can effectively hurricane away flying creatures. So if someone's playing like a dragon deck or something like that, you can, for a reasonable cost of mana, you can wipe their board of flying creatures. Skull Muncher is some card draw. He's an elemental, which is a little helpful. But the main thing is, if you want to get rid of a bunch of your elemental tokens, then he can gobble them up and you can lightning bolt something to pieces. Soul of the Harvest, again, when creatures come into play, you draw a card. Unfortunately, it says non-token, so it's kind of a nombo there. But he is an elemental, and eh, green card draw is sometimes tough to come by. Alright, this is a weird one. Thermopod is an odd card, but it has the potential to do amazing things with this deck. The main thing you care about about Thermopod, because we're not playing any snow-covered lands because we just can't afford it. But sacrifice creature, add one red mana to your mana pool. What this lets you do is if you have your general, a Thermopod, and Perilous Forays, which is a little farther down the stack, you can basically put all the land in your deck into all the basic lands of your deck into play and lightning bolt somebody a lot. Now this is Till Ah crap. Tillonalis? Tillonali? Tillonalis Summoner? Alright, this one makes elementals. It makes one one red elementals. And if you have the city's blessing, you get to keep your elementals. And so it is very beneficial to make a bunch of one one elementals that if they die you get to lightning mold things. A tornado elemental, again, is just more defense against flying stuff. We, being green, don't have a lot of flying dudes. Wall of Blossoms is, again, just a cantrip. I mean, it's a 0-4 wall. Let's dead draws your card. Wood Elves. It's a creature that goes and gets you a land. And the perk is this one puts the forest into play untapped. So that takes care of the creatures in the deck. Now, next... Let's look at the sorceries. All right. We got Cultivate, which goes and gets some lands, goes and gets two lands, put one, puts one into play, one in your hand. So it's a bit of ramp. Now, normally you would see a Kadama's Reach in here too, but Kadama's Reach is a little bit more expensive than Cultivate, so we had to kind of pick and choose and couldn't afford Cultivate. I um, couldn't afford Kadama's Reach. Explore, a draw a card, put an extra land to play. Again, just kind of like a little pseudo ramp. Explosive Vegetation, more lands in play. Azuri's preda Predation. Okay, this card ended up being, this card had a big question mark for me when I put it in the deck. But I really have started to like it. I mean, it's, it's much more entertaining than I was expecting it to be. And it can do a huge amount of damage depending upon what creatures are on the board. I mean, it's absurdly expensive. It's like 8 mana. But still is entertaining. Okay. Far Wanderings. This is one of those things, uh, the normal version, you put a search your deck for a basic land and put it into play tapped. If you have Threshold, though, you get to search for three basic lands and put them into play tapped. This has the potential to be super with Omnath a little bit later game when you can put three lands into play. All right. Firecat Blitz. Now, this card has some very important, very important errata. It makes cat elemental creatures. So, you make a bunch of elementals with this. Now, you remove them from the game at the end of the turn, which is a little unfortunate, but if you have one of the means to sacrifice things, this could be very damaging if you can sacrifice them before they go away. And it also has the potential to be a game ender because you can flash it back if you have a bunch of mountains on the table. And then you can double up on the elementals for like a game ender. Harmonize is just some solid card draw. In green, it's kind of not as easy to get as you might think. Harvest Season. 
Harvest Season is one of those ones that I really want it to be good, but I just don't know. It hasn't it hasn't shown its amazingness in this deck yet, but I have high hopes. I'd like to see a situation where I get to attack with like Omnath and three or four other elementals and then put three or four more elementals into play. So anyway, I'm I think this one's gonna show its value, good or bad, after more play. Heat Shimmer is just kind of an interesting trick that lets you copy the best thing on the table or anything that helps you out at the time. It's a sorcery, so it's not going to be like a super trick, but it is often pretty helpful to be able to do that. Hull Breach. I have been surprised how much I like this card. Destroy an artifact or an enchantment or an artifact and an enchantment. It's just a good versatile two-for-one or potential two-for-one. Journey of Discovery is more ramp. And in this case, it is, you probably are going to want to cast it for six and get both. Like, get two lands and put two extra lands into play. Nissa's Expedition, more lands into play. Nissa's Pilgrimage, more lands into play. Nissa's Renewal, more lands into play. Overrun and Overwhelming Stampede are both for the points where... An army starts to develop, an army of elementals starts to develop, and you want to have the chance of ending a game by stampeding or overrunning someone. Peregrination, it's just putting more lands into play. Rampant Growth, more lands into play. Ranger Path, Search for Tomorrow, more lands into play. Shaman, shaman, uh, shamanic, shamanic, uh, shamanic Revelation. Again, card draw and potential life gain. If you are making good progress in the elemental, de elemental department, you could gain a lot of life off of this. Soul's Majesty. Again, you're probably going to count on about five cards from this because either Omnath or some elementals are going to be probably what you have. And Wave of Vitral. We have a couple of artifacts, we have a couple of enchantments, and that's about all that is going to happen to us. And we don't have that many, so it doesn't matter that much. This could be that thing that saves us from being thoroughly overwhelmed. From inconvenient things that... I don't know, it's just kind of a... I'm on the fence about this one. I have high hopes for trying it out. It hasn't been amazing yet, but hopefully it'll get there. See your sundial. This is just a little bit of card draw since we are putting lots and lots of lands into play. Wayfarer's Bobble because of lots and lots of lands. Now, let me see. Ah, here we go. Okay. Instance and Enchantments. All right. Comet Storm is affordable, and it's a good option to have a way to do some direct damage, especially with all of the ramping we're going to do. We have the potential to have a decent amount of mana, and Comet Storm could be a board clearer or a game ender. Destructive Revelry is just an answer to inconvenient artifacts or enchantments. It's an instant, and the two damage is really negligible, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Grab the Reins is, if we end up with a really large Realm Seekers, or if somebody has a ridiculously large creature, we can steal it and throw it at them. And sometimes it's good to just have a trick where you can grab a creature. And anyway, it's just good to have tricks. Harrow is in here because it gets lands at instant speed, which is kind of unusual as cards go. And it lets us put two elementals into play if we have Omnath out. And that could be very helpful for blocking and possibly keeping us alive. Wild Ricochet. Again, just copying a spell and retargeting another spell. It's pretty good to be able to do sometimes. Now, enchantment-wise, we have four of them. We've got Evolutionary Leap, which lets us sacrifice creatures, and I want to be able to sacrifice elementals if I need to. And it gets us more cards, so we get a little card advantage there. It gets us more creatures to cast. Font of Fertility. 
it puts the land into play. And one of the upsides is it it could be done as an instant, but probably what's going to happen is, you know, turn one, you do this, turn two, you use it. You play it and use it. All right. Uh, impact trimmers. Eh, I'm kind of on the fence about this, but I was thinking that if we're putting a bunch of elementals into play, and we have a number of ways to do it, especially with Omnath and with Firecat Blitz and the uh, unpronounceable word summoner, being able to put being able to do damage as you put creatures into play, it's just kind of one of those things to help whittle everyone down. And perilous forays, where we can sacrifice a creature to search our library for a land with the basic land type and put it in play tapped. If you have Omnath out and you have a bunch of mana, you can basically just, you know, get a creature, sack it, the elemental that pops up, you sack it, you get a new land, and you cycle through like that. And it lets you, it has the potential to let you lightning bolt something a lot while also advancing your board state by getting more lands into play. And, you know, you basically burn through the elementals you create with landfall. Now, after that, we got some lands. Blighted Woodland, and this one, it just puts more lands into play. I'm trying out the two deserts that are applicable to our colors. The Desert of the Fervent and the Desert of the Indomitable. And these, I'm torn about. I don't... I, I like being able to cycle them, but I'm kind of on the fence about them. Evolving Wilds is next. And for Evolving Wilds, again, it just goes and gets land. If we have Omnath out, it gets us two elementals instead of one. And then there's a bunch of forests. And some mountains. And then we have Terramorphic Expanse, which is pretty much the same as Evolving Wilds. And we have Warped Landscape, which is kind of like a less exciting version of Evolving Wilds. Or Terramorphic Expanse. And I'm kind of on the fence about Warp Landscape, but again, it has the potential to get us an extra land. So, anyway, that is deck number one, Omnath, for my $20 EDH challenge. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And also, don't forget to enter the contest if you're interested. Just uh, subscribe and leave a comment, and that will enter you in the contest. And hmm, I don't think there's anything else I need to mention. I think that's about it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Also, I have links in the description if you want to follow us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And... I'll, I think that's it. Anyway, I hope you all have an excellent day, and I hope to see you for the next $20 budget EDH deck. The contest will end Tuesday, May 29th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.